about the composition of the sediment. If it changes um, up a transect, uh, I have a feeling that it probably doesn't that much though. Oh, this is a great question, and we actually talked about this before, but I just want to point it out again. Megan, how many hours does it take to annotate, like, an hour of video? So, uh, it usually takes me about an hour to do maybe 15 minutes of a dive. So, if there's a 24-hour dive. <laughs> it's it's going to be a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, and usually that's... Uh, Dependent on how dense the community is. So when we're looking at that one crazy rock yesterday, that, that's going to take me a long time to annotate. But say like when we first came on shift this morning and we were going through that sort of sediment patch with the pebbles, mm -hmm. that, that won't take me nearly as long. So I'll be able to get through that area really quickly. But an area that's really dense might take me significant time. But it just sort of evens out to about an average of one hour for every 15 minutes of dive time. So if you just work 24 hours a day, you could do a 24-hour dive in about four days. Sure. <laughs> you need sleep. Probably not. Like, I probably just at one point wouldn't be able to annotate at all. You just type uh, fish, fish. Fish. <laughs> I would just have so many errors. It would take me so much extra time to QAQC after the end, at the end. And I do count that uh, review of my work into the Little estimated thing. time it takes. So how do you become an annotator? Um, well, how I became an annotator was uh, I came to Hawaii to do my master's um, studying deep sea corals, living on lava flows off the big island. And in order to, to you know, complete my research, I needed some sort of tool to count and identify all the corals that we were seeing along a transect. So that's how I got into contact with Chris Kelly, um, at, who was at the University of Hawaii at the time. Um, and he showed me the annotation software VARS. And um, Janie Culp taught me how to annotate. So she was actively annotating in the lab at the time and showed me the ropes of how the software works and, and how do you go about annotating um, animals in the software. And then I was able to use it to uh, go through the dive video that I had uh, and count and identify each one of the animals that I was interested in. So those were mainly the corals, the precious corals, uh, like the pink coral, hemichorallium, um, black corals, antipatheria, gold coral, hula mana mana halmea, and um, bamboo corals, the caratoicididae. And uh, after I finished my, my thesis work and defended, I was looking for a job. And, uh, you know, I just chatted with Chris Kelly because he was on my thesis committee. And I was like, oh, well, you know, Things are going well, but you know it's hard to find work. And uh, he had uh, become the Okeanos Explorer um, lead for the capstone expedition um, that was occurring over a course of three years here in the Pacific and had some money to hire an annotator part-time. So I started doing that. And uh, here I am still now uh, continuing with that work, but with multiple vehicles data um, that, and that includes the Hercules data, um, the Sebastian data from Belcor, uh, Okeanos data uh, from the Deep Discover ROV, and 
data from ROV Luukai, which is the University of Hawaii's remotely operated vehicle. So would you just take any any dive annotation you were given, or is it just those specific ones that you work with? Um, so we've mainly been focusing on uh, dives that are occurring in the Pacific, mainly in marine monument waters. Um, these dives sort of fall a little bit outside the, the monument, but they are still within Hawaiian waters, and these are going to be really of great interest to uh, monument folks who are looking to see if uh, expanding the uh, extent of the monument will be important. So they're, they're going to be important for a lot of people uh, and seeing this data is really useful. So these dives will be on our list of possible dives to annotate in the future. Um, our next set of dives that we are going to be working on are dives from uh, the Nautilus and uh, NA-114. So we have, we have some catching up to do. That's okay. We appreciate the work anyway. Yeah, uh, and we also have been working on a few dives in the Atlantic as well. Um, that's where the Okeanos is currently, and uh, a lot of work's been being done over there, but not a lot of annotating has been happening. So we're going to try to help out with that as well. It's it's not an easy job becoming an annotator. Uh, if you've been no. listening along, you hear me rattling off all these names. There are a lot of animals to learn. So it's not something you could just jump in one day and, and, and learn like super easily. Um, you really have to know your animals, uh, be really confident in your taxonomy. Uh, otherwise, it could be a really challenging and frustrating job. Um, also, just sort of sitting and staring at blue computer screens isn't for everyone. So uh, I, I've heard a lot of people say that they wouldn't like to have my job, but I love it. It's not your only job. No, it's not my only job. I, I do multiple things. Um, all the multiple things. Yeah. All, every multiple. <laughs> I, I have a very, very widely varied job. So I'm not always annotating all the time, every day. Um, there's also a database, um, QAQC, that we do that goes along with our annotations. Um, I also manage uh, websites uh, for the university. So uh, I manage the Hurl archives. Um, provide data and video for people interested in um, the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory Archive. Um, I also work with the University of Hawaii's ROV Luukai as their data manager, social media coordinator, slash navigator, mapper person. Navigator, mapper person, yep. Yep. I think that's Aaron's official title, pretty sure. Yep, something like that. <laughs> On the ship, at least. Right. You might be wondering why I have so many different jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, how does one person do all that? Um, it, it doesn't always happen all at once. Um, and I just sort of fill the roles that were empty and needed. And uh, I really enjoy the variety of things I've I get to do and the things I get to learn uh, every day is definitely a learning process and learning something new, which is really exciting. Um, do you use machine learning to help annotate yet? Not currently, um, but there are a few things in the works uh, for developing um, detection using uh, computer learning. Oh, what's, what's this guy? The new sponge. Yeah. Okay. Brand right, new. I'll come Never back to the question. Before. Yeah. This is Hyla stylus, but we haven't seen this yet on our dives. Are we sampling it? No. Okay. No, we don't. We, we've collected one of these before. Zoom in, please, Aaron. For example, as someone who is not an annotator, like to me, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, sponge on a stalk. Got it. It looks like a bell. 
It does look like a bell. That's how you know it's hylostylus. So nice. it's got the really skinny, thin stalk, and that is one spicule going oh, really? up. Yeah. Got ants in its pants, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's you. Yeah. I think oh. it's you. Oh. <laughs> I think it's all of us. I think it's all of us. It's I'm Hercules. not on those. I'm not on those. Yeah, and then and then the top bell of the sponge is sort of has more of a parallel um, cone bell shape rather than sort of a poofy shape, and it has that osculum at the top that is kind of roundish. I don't know. Yeah, I see it once we like once we get closer, but you just can like see things from like several thousand miles away. I'm like, oh, that white speck, yeah. It looks like a white speck, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's a high, well, because like, just how thin it was. It yeah. Just, I don't know. But There's that's this, that's why that's how you're an annotator. Yeah, I've yeah. just seen so many of them. Uh, it just start to learn these things, uh, and you don't always get those nice zooms, which can sometimes be frustrating um, when you're an annotator and you're questioning what something is, and we get kind of bummed when we can't give it the best ID. And when we know that like, oh, if we just got a little bit closer, we'd know exactly what it is. Um, that's why I usually call for, for so many Zooms, just because I'm like, oh, I just need to see it a little bit or get an idea of what's in this area. Um, a lot of corals can look alike. Um, yeah. <laughs> Most of them in the eyes of a non-marine biologist. <laughs> oh, yeah. And even in the eyes of an annotator with a lot of experience, uh, you can look at something and not be able to tell what it is. This uh, doesn't seem like soul. And if we do come across, say, something that is small and blobby and we can't even get close to guessing what the phylum is, uh, we usually... Uh, if we know, if we're confident that it's an animal, we'll note it as animalia other, um, and then take a picture, send it to people, try to figure out what it is. But if it's just, we can't ID it because it's so far away, so blurry, um, we usually do not annotate that object. So w there is like this certain level of confidence. Uh, but for new annotators, it's best to try to annotate a lot of things, have someone else review the work, and uh, be able to point out where you could go a little bit further. Or sometimes uh, you might jump to a conclusion of identification um, that you actually need to pull back from just because you can't have that level of confidence. So it's sort of a... It's not an easy thing, and I feel like it's going to be a long time before we can train com computers to be able to do this type of thought process. Right, back to the uh, artificial intelligence. So, like, you can... Basically, right now, you're at the point where it just can point to things that should be animals, right? Right. Yeah, and that, and it works really well for drop camera work. And it's, it's a little more difficult... Um, when using a mobile vehicle like an ROV. This is a nice cinelacted sea cucumber. Unfortunately, that's making me think of Swedish fish. Yeah. yeah. Watermelon yeah. flavor. <laughs> it looks like a watermelon flavored sea cucumber to me. <laughs> does. Yeah, so um, for drop cameras, you're staying in one position and things are coming in and out of the view. So the computer is pretty good at saying this pixel or group of pixels is new and is moving. So this is, it detects that. Um, and that can save you a ton of time of watching video that is basically still. And you only have to watch the parts that have animals. So you just go through and you're like, okay, this is this, this is that. And with drop cameras, they're usually baited cameras um, that bring predators. And so one of the first things that you want to do is detect the first arrival of animals to that camera and that, uh, that bait. And so the computer is really good at doing that. 
but it's not so good at telling you what that thing is. Speaking of things, um, do you know if any of the animals that we found are bioluminescent or have bioluminescent properties? Some bamboo corals are bioluminescent, yeah. and they use that as a defense mechanism to sort of call for help uh, from some of the larger predators out there uh, if they are being predated upon. We can't see the bioluminescence because of the lights that we're using, but they're out there. Yeah, but like if you were in a sub and you turned off all the lights, you would be able to see the bioluminescence. Right. Which is really cool. I bet. Have you seen you that? You would or would not be able to see it? You would be able to see it. Really? Yeah, if you let your eyes adjust to the dark, you can actually see the bioluminescence. Have you seen that? Have I you? have seen it. Nice. It's really cool. Like, even if you uh, went out on deck, like, in, in a dark night, there's no lights on at night, and you're just steaming through the water, and you're looking down, you can sometimes see bioluminescence. Oh, oh my Ooh. goodness. Hello. Oh, look at this Caliphacus. Oh, it's got some fun anemones. So there's a Venus flytrap anemone on the long stalk, and then this little um, orangish patch that's on that sponge. Those are benthic tenophores, called Jalpiella. So that's the Venus flytrap anemone, Amphianthus, not Amphianthus, uh, Actinus scyphia. I wouldn't have known the difference personally. Yeah, but like, I was just like, oh no, I made a mistake. No, it <laughs> I appreciate your diligence. Amphianthus are the small ones on the uh, corals, and the Actinoscyphia are the Venus flytraps. Um, is there just video being captured, or are there high-resolution photos? Yeah, we're capturing photos as well, and our data logger is uh, capturing photos that I then get to look through to find the ones that aren't blurry, because the ROV moves and creates some blur. And then while I'm annotating, I also will capture photos. Oh, cool. So, like, if I find a particularly good view, I can actually, like, buffer through the video and stop. Nice. And be like, oh, this is the best frame, and snap a photo. That's helpful. Yeah. It can be really helpful if, like, you know, one of the really cool things gets missed. It, it happens sometimes. Like, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, maybe you're logging a sample or just the button just didn't click, get clicked at just the right time, yeah. um, yep. I will also snap photos. And those photos will be associated with the annotations that get sent uh, to the database. Video, Aaron, uh, what is the, the highest resolution on these cameras? Um, on these two cameras, so we have uh, a Zeus on Herc and then a mini Zeus on Argus right now. And they both shoot in HD. Um, and then we have some composite cameras along the side that are used for a lot of, uh, like, I'm trying to think of the right maintenance and stuff. So the ROV pilots will use those for different flying things. Um, but yeah, the highest resolution on the, these cameras is HD. There is a 4K camera that we're testing, but yeah nice. these ones seem to be working well i think There's the image is very clear i mean it's also coming from the bottom of the ocean so like <laughs> i'm just impressed like i mean it will be exciting when we move to 4k it will be and that's great for science although like have you ever watched like a movie that you've watched on a normal tv and watched it in one of those like curved like super high definition TVs and it's just like a little too real looking. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. I guess I'll uh, actually I kinda like it a little fuzzy, I think. Yeah, especially with that hurts me to hear. <laughs> Sorry, but like no, I saw it's like it, it's like the sports or like, sports look weird. And I saw uh, Kung Fu Panda on one, and like you could see like every single hair on every anim animated animal. Just like, was, oh. is, is it's going to say that's the animation, though. 
<laughs> yeah, that is animation. So it's it's worse than animation. But you know, Megan was saying with sports, it's also weird. I, I've seen live stuff. Too. It's just too, it's too real. Like if I wanted to see a stage play, I'd go see a stage play. But for science, it will be excellent. I feel like sometimes, like for the shows, it like gives it. I don't know, like a a soap opera be yeah, opera exactly. feel. Yeah, Like it kind of the cin cinematography of some of the films gets lost with some of the yep. extra definition. But it's really great for nature videos. Yeah, exactly. So like, for the science, amazing. I'm yeah, amazing for science and nature and. Uh, but for like artsy fartsy stuff, I think it's it's a little little we too like much. To have focus areas and so that part's defined and everything else needs to fall to the wayside and everything is just like 100 sometimes it's crisp. better to like let your brain fill in the gaps yeah. when you're like imagining things like a, an imaginary storyline exactly um oh you know somebody uh asked about this like several dives ago Hi. um zoom in please oh there's another snail hey. did you see it it just like jumped oh. Like right up off the seafloor. I love it. There it goes. Uh, uh, um, on. I don't know if you saw it, Megan, but they keep calling it the mystery scrubbing bubble animal. The mystery scrubbing bubble animal? Yeah, I don't think it was on any of our watches, but it's like a like in the shape of like one of those little scrubbing bubbles, like the you know, the little um characters for the scrubbing bubble like cleaner. Like a jellyfish sort of shape? Yeah. But I think it was like on the sea floor. I'm not sure, but I do remember someone mentioning that. But that hasn't been on our watches. So. Yeah, I probably know what it is. I just can't imagine what it is uh, with that description. You know, like the fish with the little bit, and then it's like got some like silver on the side. What's that fish? The little bit with the silver on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> like all of the fish. All of the fish. I can tell you what it's not. That's not Chana Cops. You said that a lot. <laughs> I know what it's not. <laughs> uh, someone in the chat said a limpet. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's limpets are kind of like fat, but oh, I don't know like if that's what that snail? person is. It, maybe I don't maybe, know. Maybe like because like because uh, it looks kind of bubbly and like a little bit fuzzy. But I think like we were like we, not we sure what it was. Whoever was on the watch. Oh. We don't have a marine biologist on every watch, and we don't have a, uh, well, do we have a geologist on every watch? Uh, that one I'm not sure about. But this watch is actually pretty unique because we have both, so. Yeah. Hashtag best yeah. watch. Yeah, I think the, I next, think the watch next watch has is two, two geologists, and then the one after that has two biologists. Oh, okay. They should have mixed that up. Huh? They should have mixed that up. Well. <laughs> I don't. I don't make the plans. I know nothing. Usually, the plan is to have a geologist and a biologist. I don't know. But it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes you have two biologists. Sometimes you have two geologists. And if you get too many geologists, you get too many rocks. <laughs> and then you have thousands of pounds of rocks. Oh, you mean you like those ship. rocks that I was hauling to shore? Yeah, the, those rocks. The 900 pounds of rocks. The plan is uh, we're going to go get the rocks and put them back on the ship so we can add more rocks to the pallet and pack the pallet so we can ship them. Great. Uh-huh. So I know what I'm doing on Monday. Yep, oh, that's oh. Monday. Uh, it says that Chris was confused. They didn't know what it was. He didn't know what it was. Oh. Well, if Chris didn't know what it was, then it was probably something weird. Yeah. Because he knows... A lot of the things, like all the things. He taught me most of what I know about the things. Is Chris awake right now? Um, maybe, you know, he, probably. He, he's not commenting. Sorry, I thought you were just commenting on something. Oh, no, no. You just no. saw. Yeah, he's probably awake, but he's probably, like, doing his morning walk. Oh, it's just, it's Saturday, isn't Saturday, it? Yeah, it's Saturday morning. Huh. What a concept. Weekdays, weekends. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I was totally convinced that yesterday was Thursday. Yeah, that's why we didn't get the right leggings. Yeah, and nobody I, knew it was Friday. I didn't know. I didn't know it was Friday. I was seriously convinced it was Thursday. It's hard to keep a sense of time out here. 
Well, especially with these 24-hour dives. 24-hour dives, you have these split watches, and the landscape doesn't really change. So. <laughs> You just know what you're what you're doing the next day. This is a really pretty crinoid. All right. Um, so it doesn't have long filaments at the ends of its arms. It has good size cirri. It has that dual tone color. The pinnules aren't super spaced. Uh, it could be in the Philly Antidonity. Sorry. Sorry about that. But it could be something unknown. Uh, is this a it's really pretty. Um, I'm not going to collect this one. Okay. I need to move along. It's in the science shot. They're resharing the scrubbing bubble screenshot. It's just not something that I like knew off the top of my head. Yeah, they have a screenshot apparently. That was in the last expedition. Well, that oh, changes things. That definitely changes things. Yeah. I, I was definitely. Uh, there's a lot of those Gaza snails. That's the third one. Ooh, poor rock. Yeah. Cool Argus view. Yeah. It looks like this one. It's an awesome rock. Let's get over it. We're on Hawaii time. Yeah, we're on. I actually have a little bit better grasp of what day of the week it is just because I have a classroom interaction. So I have to look at the calendar and see what classes we're meeting with. But, um, if I didn't have that, and I wasn't like actively journaling each day what was going on, I probably would have no idea what day of the week it was. Oh, this is a cool rock. Ooh. Oh. You can really see like how it was flowing. Mm-hmm. My video tag. Wow. Video. It's got some really nice texture on it, too. Yeah. It looks like really lumpy. Oh, and look at these, the striations. Look at it. On the wow, it's like a cool pillar. Yeah. It's oh, and there's a coral on top. Yes. Do uh -huh. you. Will we be able to check this quick, or do you want to hold? Um. We, yeah, we can just check it quick. We don't okay. need to hold. Oh, that's a nice actinostolity anemone, that big one. Some norella, unbranched bamboo, uh, Romilla gorgia militaris, umbellopathies. Uh, there's a chrysogorgia, a Venus flytrap anemone, the actinoscyphia on a dead sponge stalk. Also on that spock, stalk is a tubularid hydrozoan, more norella, some Bachelids, uh, crinoids. This is my favorite rock. Oh, wow. And now it's like super angular up here. Yeah. Like, is it going to end in a spire? Uh -huh. oh. It's like but, pride uh, rock. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the Trisopathies black coral. That was, that was really cool. That was cool. That was really fun. <laughs> All of my video highlights are just like cool rock. Really cool rock. Super cool rock. Yeah, you should the cool rock, rock is still cool. <laughs> Hold it behind. Bonk. 
There's a Califacus sponge, a glass sponge, the family Euplectelidae. Seeing some more of those Romilogorgia militaris and Norella. Uh, what are the small red animals that have been popping up here and there? Like the shrimp, maybe? Yeah, probably a little shrimp. Um, this orangish red animal is a Brasingid sea star. And then more of that Vermilogorgia. Lots of that. We're definitely getting into the Vermilogorgia zone, according to our depth. It's the same you depth. You make your way a little more east. We've please. been uh, seeing that coral at. Try and stay on the uphill side of Argus, if anything. Okay. Is Argus really that far from the ship? Yep. Okay. There's a lot of current. Yeah. It's been tracking really steady. I can. Do you okay. want Argus over further? No, no. I just wasn't sure if it was a USBL artifact or if it was current or what. But I'll stay up slope of Argus. So, Coralie, I don't know if we can answer this question, but we could try. What percentage of the rocks collected turn out to be volcanic ejecta from ancient volcanic eruptions? Turn out to be volcanic what? Ejecta. I mean, they're all, they're all volcanic. Ejecta. This is going to be a wall. Um, yep. So, we actually can't see the insides of some of the rocks, but uh, we did collect... I think probably two rocks that um, are mud with the ferromanganese Sorry? on top of that. Okay. I'm sure probably the rest are uh, like ancient volcanic rocks with ferromanganese crust on top. Uh, do we ever bring back live samples to the ship? Uh, so some things make it back alive. Yeah, yeah, sometimes things make it back alive. Uh, usually 
small invertebrates like um, polychaetes or amphipods, uh, brittle stars, they might still be active um, and living. Some corals might still be a little bit alive, but most of them uh, arrive dead uh, or not viable for continued life for long periods of time after arriving. And it's usually because of the, uh, the warm temperature warming up and uh, just the stress of being transported. Oh, it's a black coral. Um, I didn't get a good look at that, but it could be a heteropathies. It didn't look quite right for bathopathies. This is a really cool ridge, ridge rock thing. All right, so I we we found we got a picture of the the weird what do you call it? Scrubbing bubbles is what they called the it. Scrubbing bubbles. bubbles, mystery animal. Apparently, it was moving um, along the seafloor when it was spotted at a decent clip uh, for something its size. Uh, yeah, it's real weird. Frankly, I, it looks like a pierogi to me. Or like an uncrustable or something like. It mm -hmm. kind of looks like a ravioli. Yeah. Yeah. Around around ravioli, sure. Oh, well, pierogi is basic. Yeah. They're all the same thing. Yeah. Stuffed di stuffed pasta. <laughs> looks like stuffed pasta. <laughs> I do like pierogies. Usually pierogies are like half circles. folded. Yeah. I'm looking forward to pierogies. We're told that we always have them for Christmas. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Choice. My uncle makes Aaron, them. Do you wanna? Oh, sorry. They're um, really good. Do you wanna? Try to zoom in. I'll try to keep it steady. Yep. Yeah, so, like, if I was to guess what this thing is, it's some sort of gastropod would be my best guess. Uh, but, yeah, no, I've never seen anything like that. I think that. it's a bamboo coral. Oh, yeah, well, that's a bamboo coral. Um, I'm just guessing about the scrubbing bubble mystery animal right. from the previous cruise, but you got it. Good ID. This is a bamboo coral. This is an unbranched octocoral bamboo. <laughs> Internodal unbranching. Trevor's taking over for the science <laughs> row. Oh, he's pretty good. <laughs> so what can you tell us about the polyps on this bamboo coral? They are open. <laughs> <laughs> for business. There's eight tentacles. Yeah. Yep. The red business. center. And they are... Uh, they come off on all sides of the coral Bouncy. instead of just one side. Mm -hmm. all right. Sorry. That's about all I've got. No, that Those good. are all very good characters. Good job. Kind of being Thanks. Tugged a little bit. All right. I should probably come up now that I'm too low and about to hit something. <laughs> Ooh. Let's take a look what I'm about to hit. The spicy sonar. What's oh, this thing off to the right? Oh, it is oh. pretty spicy. I see a coral. Eric's about to go behind it. Huh? You're gonna, you're, you're fine. I'm just, you know, really close to that branched, unbranched bamboo coral, which I can see from <laughs> Argus. You know it's neat when there's an unbranched bamboo coral between Herc and Argus. <laughs> All right, I'm clear now. Okay. Sorry, Trevor, I missed it. What was that ID? Unbranched bamboo coral. Oh, very cool. Want to look at a slime star? Yeah. Yes. Only always. Do I ever? I would well, love how, how to. How big is that it. bamboo coral that you're coming upon? Very large. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the base looks huge. That's about uh, a meter and a half, maybe two meters. Oh, wow. Try to not. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> zoom in on the little slimy star. This is Hymenaster. It's a slime star. This one's a dark sort one. of a, yeah, it's dark. Yeah. Normally they're like a nice pink 
very light and happy. Oh, that one's this been one's chomped a, on a little. Out of here. Well, I think they can retract their legs a little bit. Really? Might, yeah, I don't yeah. know. They're, they're very squishy, but it could have been chomped on. Who knows? Maybe it got stuck. Lost a limb. Who knows? Um, so these are some chunky corals. How long did they take to get so big? Uh, for a bamboo coral of that size, uh, could be like over 60 years old. Six or 60? 60. 60. Six zero. Yeah, I would have to read up on the, the growth rate, so cool. but that's just sort of my back of the envelope um, estimate. But, you know, if we really wanted to age it, you would measure the width of the base. Um, so that diameter and uh, based on the growth rate of unbranched bamboo corals from the Hawaiian Islands. Um, there has been a little bit of study of bamboo coral growth rates, I believe from sh slightly, sh well, definitely shallower waters than this. Um, so these ones that grow deeper Coming might grow over. slower. So you might estimate That's their okay. ages to be a little bit more. Um, than what I, I just sort of threw out, but yep. they're pretty old, that's for sure. Just trying um, to get over definitely older than me, easily. Older? Probably older than everyone on this ship. I guess I'm fine now. Uh, guess yeah, fine. probably, yeah. So, Roger. Could be, uh, like, 100 years old. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so if it's a only lot of 60, though, then we've got oh. some people over 60. Again. Yeah, I, I don't know. 60 was just like yeah, yeah. That a safe be, number, definitely. at least at least that yeah. old. That would be a really good way to make yourself feel I'm really good about your age, just to be, to be like, well, I'm a super young kind of coral. Artist, but yeah, I'm super. No, I'm going to say upset. that next time. I'm, I'm a super young coral. Not or old. a rock. Right, I'm a, geologically, I'm like... I'm a baby rock. I'm geologically, farmed. I don't even that we think won't I'm exist, a thought yet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. I've been seeing these uh, oranges pink sea pens. We did get a good zoom of them earlier. Um, might be Prodoptylum. Hey. Uh, where's the sea pen? Oh, we, we just passed over them. Oh, we sorry. did get a good zoom earlier. Oh, uh, okay. So, no worries there. Those are really cool rocks mixed in with all this other clutter. The big long bog looking ones. Oh yeah. I wonder if those ones are like mud rocks. Which one? Probably not. The really like long bony looking ones. Long <laughs> bony ones? I think those are fractures oh, of yeah. the columnar joining. What depth is your next rock sample? Around twenty five thirty? Three six. Huh. Around three six. Sorry, three. Whoa. Where, where are you? Two, six, eight, zero. <laughs> Two, six, eight, zero. Oh, my gosh. I was going to say, we kind of, uh, did we even start that game? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two, six, eight, zero. Let's go down way further than we <laughs> were meant to. Do you do them every 350 meters? Yep. Okay. Uh, so roughly. Reach the Argus perimeter. Hmm? So Argus sonar.
Front row, do we have time for an ROV question? Yep. Right. Um, do we use any kind of uh, echo or sonar to um, scan the environment to locate large objects ahead of the ROVs, which are out of sight? Oh, big time. Yeah, we have two sonars on two forward-facing sonars on Hercules and one on Argus. And um, personally, I watched them. That's the second most screen, second most watched screen, other than the main video feed. Yeah, very valuable to see what's coming up. Ship's moving. We're deep. There's a lot of layback at times, and uh, it takes a while to see the impacts of the moves of the ship. So if you're surprised by a big cliff wall, it can lead to interesting situations. So we try to avoid those at all costs, and sonars help greatly with that. They can see up to 100 meters ahead, and that sees the big cliff walls. We can get a head start on getting ahead, getting up out of the way of them. Sporting some very pretty colors this morning. Mm -hmm. We got the Christmas lights turned on. <laughs> That's all the, the pretty rocks. Yeah. Right. Is each ring on the sonar five meters? On the right sonar, that's Herx, that's f uh, 10 meters per division, oh, for a total okay. of 50. And on the left one, that's Argus, that's 20, or sorry, uh, 20 meters for, per division, for a total of 100. That's pretty good distance. Totally, yeah. And we have a different frequency one on the front of, lower on the front of Hercules. I don't know if you can see my hand right here. That's two and a half meters per division for a total of 10 meters. Yeah, I, I think I kind of like that one better. This one? Yeah. I don't it's know, it makes more more visual sense to me. Yeah? Kind of. I, like I like the colors, though. Like, it shows, like, how... How of rigidity. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Something is. It just Do you want like, me to come up or you can yeah, go back like down? Yeah, it just like seems to, it resolves the picture of the ground a little bit better. Yeah, it does make... The colors, oh, I feel, go. are a little more distracting on. Yeah, so, so the color ones. if you go oh, on you the quad... you change the color ramp, huh? If you go on the quad, the sonar's now on three. Oh, nice. So people can see what it looks like. What's that? That's fine, yep. It's easy to fall behind when just using your laterals, but uh, you can do you can do zero four five too as a, a balance for that. And then you're yeah half ahead. This is probably the worst. Color that scheme one's the ever. worst. I don't like that one. It's awful. Oh. It's day mode. Oh no. It's like too bright. Yeah, because the Burns dark is eyes. the uh, is the objects and the white is the no objects. Oh, inverted. thank you. Yeah. No, inverted's thank you. a little better. Uh, the orange. Nice. That was actually kind of cool. Default. Hmm. Oh, sonar one. Ugh. Oh. Sonar never. <laughs> Green one. Ooh, no, thank you. I like fire. I think I like fire. Yeah, Fire's nice. that one's nice. I should really tilt my camera up and do my job, too, instead of just changing colors on things. <laughs> yeah, sonars can also be really helpful if you're trying to can find something. Can you pass me something. that sonar box? I want to poke at things. Say if you put something down on the seafloor you. and you're trying to find it again. You'll be able to see it in the sonar. <laughs> I mean, let's. Should I just if it's twist on, this around a bunch? You know, a soft area. Yeah, right. If you've got a, a hard thing with a bunch right, of rocks, better? it might be difficult. Make sure I just. <laughs> Who's that Sorry. up there? Oh, yeah, there's a little golden string. I think I got it the wrong way. I'm not sure. There we go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Same color of that uh, snipe eel that we saw. 
Yeah, I mean, it could be a, a snipe eel, something like that, uh, or it could be nothing. Or it could be nothing. I mean, it's obviously something. It's nothing of a currently living biological interest. It is nothing of currently living biological interest. I like that. That's All how right, I, I describe my somethings sites. versus nothing. <laughs> no offense to the geologist. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> currently of biological in interest. My, my nothings versus somethings are, um, nothings are not of currently living biological interest. Uh, I'm probably the opposite. Just scrape all the stuff off the rocks. What do we need it for? Oh, there's a something. A something. All right, you want to grab this, chair? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> More than anything in the world. Is that the crab with the... Yeah, that's the crab with... With the shell. So that's the Parapagurus with the uh, Oops. unidentified oh, zoanthid. Right. Yeah. Um, we can... He's running away from yes, you. He <laughs> senses his coming to you. Are you happy for me to zoom in? Tonight? Yes, Just for go a for second. It. What is it on top of him again? It oh. is a zoanthid. Sorry. Like as a shell? Yeah. Some got some time so here. instead of having a shell, that. it has okay, the uh, zoanthid. And zoom again? It's really kind of interesting, time. that um, thing. But I believe Chris put this in our wish list. Like we see them all the time, but they're hard to capture. So, like, you win all the bonus points if you catch this. Oh, yeah. Or I'll do it. <laughs> all right, come wide, please. Yep. Okay. Do you want can me I see the... Can you rack your camera back, please? Roger. Oh, come on. And you can go ahead and land now. Okay. I'll try to go to the side. Uh oh. Oh, is Ron going to be able to land? Or? Ooh, I need to do some stuff. Fly. Okay. Da, da, da. And then this one. Let's try. 40%. Seems like a great percent. Did I turn that sense line off? Yeah. Okay. FYI, you're going to want to put them in bio them. box A. Okay. Forward box A. Alpha. Okay, get closer. So come up a bit. Sorry? Yeah, you got to get closer. Yep. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh no. no. You don't want this part, do you? You want the other part? Which part's more important? Uh, let, let's take this zoanthid. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't think oh. that would happen. Is your camera oh, no. all the way back? Uh, it is, yes. Oh, oh that no, was no. wild. I thought it was. <laughs> What's he going to do with that? Okay. His zoanthid shell? Can you okay, uh, set down back. for a sec, please? Yeah. It's very floaty in the Might front box. Might be able to catch him. Oh, yeah. Try to get over here. We could try to catch him, possibly, but we'll see how the everything plays out. My eye on him. Well, I definitely learned something new today. <laughs> Actually, okay. I was going to ask, like, or, you know, hermit crabs can switch shells. Which side so. do you want this in? Uh, bio box A. Okay. Like can you tilt your camera down a little I bit? I just, yep. I didn't know if he'd be able to slough okay, off there. the zoanthid in the same oh, way. I'm, right, exactly. I was thinking that the zoanthid would have, like, kind of, like, okay, grown on. So, like, but, yeah, I guess, uh, there you go. Yeah. And oh, you can kill okay. suction. Oh, it's going so to bio box really, lambda. really excited about this. Go down, please. There that we go. Looks like a face on the back. I was <laughs> just going to say the same thing. <laughs> I was like, like, that, that looks like a happy Okay, you can leave the camera there, there like and let's go find that guy. Thing. Yeah. Uh, Where'd he go? Where'd he yeah, go? Yeah, let's find Somewhere him. Somewhere to the right, I, I think. Like, I thought I saw him over in the He looked like he was going up and to the right. Yeah. Oh, there, oh, oh, there, there he is. is. What okay. sample are we at, Corley? You can tip camera up a little bit. Yep. Okay. Well, are we slurping him? The wrong way. Yeah. Just gonna put it on the bubble. Confirm that slurp jar two is open. Uh no. Oh yeah, sorry. It is open. Oop. Two is open. Okay. 
And what was that last sample? The last one was NA 114, or sorry, 114. 114? Yeah, sorry. Do you want me to land or just, just try to Just get him? close, yeah, just try to approach him. It's going to be pretty active. So. He's coming towards us. Oh, oh, sorry. It's okay. That wasn't you. We were yelling at him. <sighs> Running away. I thought there. he was going to run straight into the slurp. The real trick is to come up from behind him, but that's going to be tough. Yeah. Hey, Dante Estes. Where'd he go? Oh. Maybe he hitched a ride. Maybe. He's not in the slurp jar. Sonars are looking safe. We got some time still. All right. I do not see anything. Anyone see anything? We've gotten no. that for a while. No, I don't see it. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, wow. good eye. Yeah. Nice eye. Okay. Lasers now. Yeah. To get that far away. Quick. All right, you have to get closer. Yep. Just trying to get. Yeah, do whatever you can. We did. Try to sneak up on him, maybe. Can I get a half zoom, please? Just yep. a little bit in. Good there. I'm going for it. Oh, nice. Uh, Beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right, come full wide, please. Yep. That's Plus. like 100 bonus points. It's not Plus in the jar yet. Yeah, shake Collection it, shake points. It. <laughs> Get in the jar. Oh, There's the sand. No. And? Is he in there? I think oh, there's some maybe. Yes. yes. All right. Nice job, you guys. Well done. So proud. Oh, look at him. Oh, can we look at him in the jar? Oh, if you want him to escape, sure. <laughs> there, right there. Don't do anything. There's cute. Oh you my goodness, I'm excited. All right, I'm gonna stow this guy, and then let's. Uh, yeah, we're still safe. That was one one five. You tip the camera Roger, down, please. Thank you. There's uh, been some debate about uh, Oop, which geez. genus this uh, crab is in. If it's Paraprogerus or Symprogerus, we've been going back and forth. Um, That's good. I've been changing the ID. Uh, so now we will know because we'll actually okay. have it in hand, be able to compare the claws, look at the mouth uh, parts. I'll put away all the arm stuff mouth if you want to get moving. Yep. And uh, and now they're separated, so I don't have to worry about separating them in the lab. When nice. <laughs> That was wild right. how how quickly he just popped off. He just off. like it was like no ditch this. Was that up to the zoanthid or was that up to the other guy? Like who who decided to let go there? Oh the crab. So it's actively holding the thing on its back. It must be. That's cool. how the normal hermit crabs hold onto their shells. Okay, good point. Yeah, good. The, point. Their back legs are modified to like grasp the shell and hold it on. I just didn't think that that was. Quite the case That's for the zoanthid. zoanthid. Would have, yeah, like, like grown onto it. Yeah. So when we get yeah. in the lab, um, maybe like there's like a little bit of like a shell-like secretion Some bubble inside effect. the zoanthid, like where the crab is holding on. I, I'm definitely gonna check it out. That is gonna be really cool. I know for some of the the Sympagurus that have the anemones, apparently oh. there is. Um, like a little bit of like of a film or shell like structure. Thank you. That was awesome. But I don't think <laughs> we've awesome. ever really captured one of these and looked at it in this way. So it's oh, gonna be really that? great. <laughs> Absolutely. Go. And did we count that as two samples? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Two samples. Two samples. But I made a note that they were attached mm -hmm. at one point in time. Perfect. Because we were going to have to sub sample, but now it's two samples, so like a little extra work. A little less. A little less I mean, it's kind of like the same amount of work, actually. <laughs> just, I didn't help you at just all. One is what you're telling yeah. me. No, it's, it, no, it's good. Because like we were gonna have to separate them. Um, okay, come on, thanks. That was pretty cool. I didn't even think. I at first I didn't think we could separate them. Like, so that's well, cool. Yeah. Everyone, we just like saw like okay. science 
being discovered. Yeah. Now we know that they can separate. Someone might have known uh, that that happens, but I definitely didn't. Okay, well, they say, didn't tell us that 